Schindler's List, The Shining, Backdoor Whores for Red and Raw. There are some movies which are simply timeless, elevating their respective genres to new highs and are rightly praised for their impact on society. Then you have the other side of the coin, the movies so heinous that they make gagging for it three come get some look like goats gone wild five bleat off to this. <laughs> but sometimes these films can be so bad, so utterly terrible that they go beyond simply being so bad that you can enjoy them to some extent and into a realm of dirge so heinous that they need to be erased from public consciousness. With this in mind, I'm Jules the so bad he's great lad from whatculture.com and these are 10 movies so awful that they were pulled from theatres. Number 10. Black Hat it's 2015 and there's a film coming out about hacking right around the same time as the big Sony Pictures internet shenanigans and it's directed by Michael Mann and it's starring Chris Hemsworth. Black Hat should have cleaned up. But before it even hit the red carpet, the film received a well-placed shot to the head by not only reviews that would make a sailor blush, but also from the juggernaut to be American Sniper. After costing over $70 million, the film struggled to make back even $4 million in its opening weekend. Such was its adversity against the shoot to heavy flick. Universal then pulled the film before it was even a month old and ultimately grossed less than 8 mil in total. It was so bad that it became a director DVD film in Australia. Number 9. It's Pat. No list of bad movies is complete without It's Pat, the 1994 big screen adventure of the androgynous character Julia Sweeney played on Saturday Night Live. During production of the film, Sweeney expressed doubt that the character could sustain the runtime of a movie, but with the minds behind Dumb and Dumber and believe it or not Quentin Tarantino contributing to the script, there was a sliver of hope that it might be saved. But someone at Fox must have actually watched the film because they dropped the project. It was then later resurrected by Touchstone and released to the indifferent masses. It made just over $60,000 before it was pulled, and hosts a 0% Rotten Tomato score. But you know what, as Pat would say, that's the way the gravy groups! I don't f***ing know what Pat says, I've not watched this shit. Number 8. Seeking Justice and Stolen Nick Cage just loves putting his name, bizarre hair, and weird mola mola face to any crap that will pay him, and has starred in more straight-to-DVD action flicks than I've had hot meals for twos for one. In 2012, though, he hit the big time by having two of his films pulled from the screen. Seeking Justice was pulled just after two weeks, grossing under half a mil in the US. Only six months later, Stolen was pulled, only making just over $300,000. Now, true, both films were handled by smaller distribution companies, but still, hats off to this man for tanking two flicks in a single year. Number 7. The Swarm after the success of Jaws, loads of films wanted to cash in on the whole NATURE IS SCARY, FEAR NATURE, FOR IT IS YOUR RECKONING AND YOU WILL PAY WITH YOUR BLOOD! The swarm shifted from sharks to literal s*** of the skies in the form of swarms of killer bees. That was a fun sentence to say. Now, don't get me wrong, I like bees. Those rumble tumble bumbles get my Typhoo T2 thumbs up, but these killer bees, no thanks mate, you can sack them right off. The budget for this film was also insane, mainly because the likes of Michael Caine and Henry Fonda don't work for peanuts, and I assume it took a big check to get them to square off against bees. Of the $21 million budget, only a fraction was made back and the film was pulled after just two weeks. Back in 2010, it was rumoured that the film would be resurrected, but this bee make seems to have buzzed off. Puns. I've got them. Number 6. Silent Night, Deadly Night In 1984, people really didn't like the thought of Santa murdering people for some reason. They protested so hard against the film Silent Night, Deadly Night that it was almost cancelled right there and then. Not that they needed to worry because the film shit its own trousers on release, with terrible critical reception bogging it down. It was pulled from cinemas after its second week, but not before, and here's what makes it special on this list, making more than its low budget. It scored over $2 million, netting a tidy profit on its $1 million. Dollar budget. Now, some of you out there will regard this as a cult classic, so you know the drill, you can think whatever you want, sweetheart, and I'm not calling your taste in films shit. If anything, my taste in films is shit because this is the internet and that's how it works. Okay? You happy now, little sunflower? Anyway, say hi to your mum and sister for me. Number 5. Rise, Blood Hunter The 2007 vampire action horror movie Rise, Blood Hunter should have been a small hit. Not only were vampire films still very popular at the time, the cast included very well-known actors like Lucy Liu and even Marilyn Manson. It was directed by Gothica and Snakes on a Plane writer Sebastian Gutierrez, and it was executive produced by Sam Raimi. Unlike most movies of its genre, it even premiered as a notable film festival, New York's Tribeca Film Festival. And on top of it all, it showed plenty of skin. Yet it was not to be as the 
the film grossed just shy of 60 grand on its opening weekend and stumbled through two more weeks before finally biting the dust. Number 4. Honky Tonk Freeway I mean, with a name like that, how could this fail? Oh, right, that's because it was an absolute testament to shitty filmmaking and cost an absurd $24 million to just get it off the ground. And you know what? This budget was used appallingly, let me tell you, with a big deal of it going on elephant hire and bizarrely to residents of a town to paint their houses pink. What killed it, though, was that there were some shady rights deals to music and images that complicated the movie's release. In the end, it was pulled after only one week, only making back two million of its original budget. Number three, Delgo. Okay, listen to this. This film was in production for so long that two of its stars died three years before it came out. Let that sink in. With that amount of time, it's a manifest destiny for this film to have stunk, really, wasn't it? Costing $40 million, it only made back just under half a mil and was instantly pulled. There was a ton of stars in this flick too which should have helped, including Val Kilmer, Eric Idle and Michael Clark Duncan, and it was even released in the holiday season, so all should have worked. Alas, all it will be remembered for is the honour of having the worst opening weekend of any film released in over 2,000 plus theatres. Number 2. Swept Away Filmmaker Guy Ritchie became famous for two well-received crime comedy films Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels and Snatch, both certified mm. Shortly after the release of Snatch, Ritchie married pop icon Madonna, and his first project after getting married was Swept Away, a remake of an award-winning 1974 Italian romantic comedy starring his new wife. Dismissed by audiences as a Madonna vanity project, critics lambasted the film so much that Screen Gems, the distributor, only let the film air in 196 theatres. Though it grossed fairly well despite the limited release, word-of-mouth reviews caused the film to be pulled after just two weeks. A $10 million price tag only saw half a mil return and was out of cinemas quicker than Ritchie was back to crime films. And number one, and I'm gonna butcher the name, Incon, or Inchon. I don't know, it's Korean. 1981's Korean War epic, Inchon, I'm just gonna go with Inchon, is one of the most legendary box office bombs of all time, especially because of its odd origins. You know what, I'm gonna keep changing up because then I'll be right once. Inchon's $46 million budget was entirely funded by Sun Myung Moon, the founder of the controversial Unification Church, who wanted to make a Korean War film that celebrated US General Douglas MacArthur. Weird. Moon even sought a psychic to communicate with MacArthur's spirit to get his blessing for the movie. Acting legend Laurence Olivier played General MacArthur and was completely open with the press that when he was doing the film, it was for the paycheck, as he was paid $50,000 per day. Actor David Janssen died during filming, and despite the huge budget, props and scenery were made cheaply. It was directed by 1960s James Bond director Terence Young as well, who went on record to say that he regretted the entire experience. Though shot in 1979, post-production issues kept it out of theatres until September 1982. Despite the long wait, it was pulled out of theatres after just two weeks. With many critics calling it the worst movie ever made, it grossed only $5.2 million in the US. International release plans were cancelled and it has never been officially released on any home media format. However, the laughably bad movie can be streamed on YouTube. You're welcome. And that's our list. Know of any other stinkers that were cancelled quickly? Well, let me know about them in the comments section below. And why not swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. As always, I've been Jules, you've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon.